Top of the morning to you. This is Mark, and I'm uh, going to be doing a, a, a video of the, of the process of putting together a radon abatement system. So this is something that, um, this is the home that we, we uh, built. I've been building for the last two years, and um, uh, I had studied the concept of the radon. It's a, it's a colorless, odorless gas. Humans cannot detect it at all. So we have no idea to know what it is or uh, anything. I, I understand that radon is a, a toxic radioactive gas that comes out of the soil, comes out of actual granite rock, is produced by decaying uranium in the soil. And in their natural environment, the radon level is, is measured in picocuries, and you get approximately 0.8 or 0.6 picocuries per liter of oxygen, or liter of air, excuse me. So the idea is, is that um, radon can be a problem if the radon can get into the basement, and um, <clears throat> the radon can get into the basement, the house is tight, so the radon builds up in the basement because it's under positive pressure. It can come in, even if your, your basement's very tight and uh, doesn't have a lot of um, uh, places where the radon can get in, but it does find its way in, apparently. So I, when I built this house back and started in 2018, I studied this subject a little bit and found the EPA said, oh, there's no radon in, in this area of Virginia, not a big problem. So I thought, great, I don't have to spend the couple hundred dollars to build a, a radon system, even a passive radon system. And so I scrapped the idea, found that the county didn't do any inspecting on radon systems, doesn't require any radon systems, and so I thought, okay, problem solved. Until my neighbor across the street, about 400 feet that direction, they told me that they have radon in their basement. Now, the way they found out that they have radon is because their neighbor, about a half a mile down the street, said that they have radon. So they had their system tested by a radon abatement company, came out and paid them a lot of money, I guess, to find out that they have a high level of radon in their basement. So they spent about $2,500 uh, for this radon company, um, radon abatement company, and, uh, and, and, and now apparently they have a low radon system or low radon in their basement. And they said, well, look, why don't you take home this little device? It's called a radon eye and it sniffs the air and can tell you how many picocuries of radon you have in your basement. And so I thought, yeah, no problem, I'll just do that. And so I put it down there, I put it in my basement, and it said that I had a level of 16 picocuries per liter, which means I had four times the safe level of radon in my basement. Now this is a, a gas you can't smell or see or hear or feel in any way. So I had to take it for, take it for I guess honestly, uh, I was a little bit nervous about the idea of you know, investing hundreds of dollars on, on getting a, a device to uh, to remove the radon from my basement. Well, my basement consists of uh, a quite a large space. Um, uh, the floor space of the basement is almost 4,000 square feet, 3890, I think is what it is. And that space is divided by a bearing wall down the center. So it's really two spaces. And the idea is that I would maybe suck the air out from underneath the slab and create a vacuum on the slab and pull the air out and pump it outside. I thought maybe that would be a good solution. I talked to two companies. One wanted 2,500 and one wanted 2,200 for basically the same idea as what I thought of, which is two holes in the basement, sucking air out. They wanted to use a three inch uh, PVC pipe. So I'm thinking maybe four inch pipe would be better. I've got a nice utility space and I'll just build it there. Well, uh, the idea of not doing this now became really uh, kind of moot. We were definitely going to have to do this. So this became the priority. I dropped other issues that I was doing, uh, adding screen doors and so forth. And now we're working on the radon system. So let me walk you through what, what we did. Uh, 
Uh, if plan A didn't work, which is one fan pulling air from the two sides, we would add another fan and two more holes down, further down into what are going to be future um, closet space. Right now, my basement is entirely unfinished. So building the radon system is relatively straightforward and not a, not a big deal. But let me just uh, show you how we did it. And, um, and then at the very end, I'll show you the results. So uh, I actually made this video earlier, but the sound quality was so bad that you couldn't hear me talking. So I'm having to redo it after the fact. So carry on. We're going to uh, show you how it goes. Hope it works for, I hope, it, I hope it's good information for you. And maybe you can have a system, uh, uh, you know, you can test your basement and see if, see if you have a problem because Apparently it's a major problem. Oh, I forgot to mention, the EPA says that, that radon is the number two cause of cancer, uh, lung cancer deaths. Apparently the radon gets into your lungs and causes a problem over years. However, there's been some research done now that says that radon is really not a problem for people unless they smoke. So smoking is, of course, the number one reason why people get lung cancer. And then the number two uh, reason is radon. But people only get cancer from radon if they also are a smoker. So I don't know how they determined that 21,000 people died from radon when really the only people who died from radon poisoning or toxicity were people who smoked. And I don't know how they figured that they didn't get this, the cancer from just the smoking. But anyway, that's up to the EPA uh, to come up with their answers, I guess. But I was very disappointed that they produced this beautiful map that showed the levels of radon in different areas where I could have built the radon abatement system into my design before, during the construction process, and it would have been simpler and easier and cost less. But no, the EPA said that we don't have radon in this area of Rappahannock County, and so, I didn't install one, now only finding later that we do in fact have high levels of radon. We had a 16 in the basement. Upstairs, we had eight and nine. So that's where we started from. That was our starting point. Pretty scary actually, thinking, gosh, I've been breathing this stuff for the last two years. Anyway, we'll carry on. I am down Thanks. in the basement. I'm gonna show you the way that we've um, uh, planned out the uh, piping of the of the space. Let me show you looking down the length of the basement. You can't really tell what's going on here, but basically this whole space all the way down about 70 feet, I guess, on either side is an open space underneath with four inches of gravel. Uh, over on this side, we have the same, th oh, you can't see that. Okay, so down the center of the building right here, all the way down is a bearing wall, which separates the two sides of the, uh, of the basement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a vacuum point for both sides, and then tie them together. So here we have it. This is a four inch pipe. Let me see if I can see it without shaking it too much. Four inch pipe, I'm gonna drill a hole right here. It's going to come over let me get my light. It's going to come over to this point, and I'll have another four inch pipe coming up from this basement or this space. See, we have the holes going to be right there. It's going to come up about two feet or three feet. Then I'll put this fan on it, and the fan will be in the inside of the house. Then this pipe will be on the ceiling and will go all the way across and out. That's an exterior uh, wall over there. Okay, now this pipe is going to be along the ceiling here, so it'll be up in the air. <clears throat> so there is the plan, and uh, I'm going to get started drilling these holes. Uh, first, I'm going to drill the hole on the exterior of the house. Now this house is made of insulated concrete, so it's four inches of, ins or three inches of insulation 
followed by six inches of concrete and then three inches of insulation on the outside. So it's a very sturdy wall. It's not so easy to cut through it like it would be if it was just two by four construction or two by six. Okay, so let me get to it and uh, I'll show you what we have when we have the holes dug or drilled. Okay. Up. Boy, this drill is working just beautifully. It was on sale for $180 and it came with an angle grinder. And the drill bits are another $50 each. My son, who's a blacksmith, tells me in order to keep these bits in good shape, the bit cannot rise to a certain temperature. I don't know what that temperature is, something like 800 degrees. And if you're going through a lot of concrete, it'll go right through that. And if that happens, the metal changes its chemicals or mechanical structure uh, and becomes weak. So I have to keep it cool and I'll do that by dipping this in a bucket of water. Which I have right here. We can all imagine what that looks like. And it's not that hot, but he says maintain the temperature cool. Okay, um, I have now finished the hole that is uh, in there. That's, uh, these are just a couple of wires that are gonna go back in this groove. And our pipe is four inches, it goes out there. Uh, I was able to use the, um, the uh, drill, I think it's a half inch drill, and produce a bunch of holes. And then with the jackhammer uh, attachment, I was able to chip my way through and created a beautiful hole. And thank goodness I, did not hit any rebar, so good news. Anyway, I'll go out and take a look at what looks like from the outside. Okay, so here's the hole coming out of the basement and we're gonna be putting this 90 degree turn on it and it's gonna come across here. Oops, excuse me. It's gonna come across here and go up there. So that's the idea. <clears throat> so now, next step is to go and drill the two holes in the basement floor. Okay, hope that goes as well. Okay, we've drilled the hole down through the concrete and here we have it. You can see there's a four inch concrete floor and then there's two inches of rigid foam insulation and then on top and then below that is the gravel. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this mesh material down into the hole <clears throat> as you can see there and I'm going to pull the gravel out of there bringing the mesh down below, hopefully. Okay, we've got the grating, the um, hardware cloth down there in the bottom of the hole, and it's all the way around, and the insulation is above that and concrete above that. So what's going to happen is I will put the pipe down into there and I'm gonna put it in just far enough so that it reaches down to the gravel. So I'll put a, a couple of uh, screws here and here around so that it stands on that basket and doesn't go any further down. Okay, I've got the next hole dug, drilled out I should say. There it is, all the way down to the red earth of Virginia, through the gravel, through the insulation, through the rebar. Now I'm setting up a, another screen and these screens are going to go together, interlock, and then this will provide a standoff for the pipe so that it doesn't sit on the, on the ground itself, you know, so that there's space for the air to go 
into the screen. And so that's what I've done, is produce this little, uh, this is quarter by, there it is, there's the label for it. It's um, one fourth inch hardware cloth, galvanized. That's the stuff. All right, so let me put this together and I'll take a picture of it when I've, uh, when I've got it assembled. Okay, the PVC pipe is assembled here and ready to go into the two holes here and over there. And then I'll backfill it with gravel. And I guess the next step will be to solidify the, the the space uh, with concrete so that it's anchored permanently. Okay, the next step has been done. I have cemented the pipe down four inches. I filled in the gravel below up to the screen. The pipe is nice and level. Same thing over here. So these two pipes are going to come together this is nice and level here. This is a level pipe. Then I'm going to put my what's called a Fernco fitting. Fernco fitting, which goes from four inches to six inches. And then my fan is a six inch, so it'll sit right on there. Make sense? Okay, that's the next step. Now, while that concrete is, while that concrete is solidifying, I'm going to bring the pipe in from the, from the outside. I'm gonna put the 90 on it before I bring the pipe in. This will put it level. And it'll be a 10 foot length. And the 90 will actually start inside the wall a little bit. So I have to get the 90 on there um, beforehand, before I put it in the wall. Okay, I'm making the connections for the uh, fan right now. And I wanted to show you uh, kind of a cool thing that, that, that uh, has, that's available. They're called the Wago Le Lever Nuts. And uh, this is how they are, operate. They've got a little lever here, and you can connect. This is a 12 gauge wire, and this is, I don't know what kind, 18 gauge, something very small. And then I've got the, the ground, the hot, and then here's the neutral. And so this is how it works. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's see here. So you can see that little lever and you flick it down and it locks it in place. Now you slip the other neutral wire up into there. It's out of, and then it locks in place. So now we just fold these, fold these wires down into the space, which is kind of challenging. There's not very much space here, and I only have one hand to do it. So I'm going to turn this off and and do it with both my hands. Look it out. Okay, the inside work is all done. Now uh, we're just going to have to attach the pipes to the exterior of the house. The reason I can't get to that is because the, uh, I don't have four inch uh, clamps that can attach the pipe to the, to the walls, to the exterior wall. So let me just walk you through what we've got here. Again, coming from that side. Again, the reason why I have these two taps is because right down the center of the house, this center here, all the way down is a bearing wall. So there's a footer that blocks the air travel between these two spaces. So that's a separate space. Then it comes in over here. What I've done is install a 
switch that operates the fan and uh, use this heavy duty um, number 12 UF wire which is complete overkill but I had a little scrap of it and um, you have to strap it firmly so that it's not flopping you can't have it flopping around but a little bushing goes into this hole and uh, the space is limited in here but it's not too cramped um, then I added another little outlet over here um, just just for good measure um, okay so then the you can hear the pump is running right now and it's quite quiet it's not loud and I suspect that's due to the fact that it's sitting on these rubber bushings this is a rubber bushing and it stops the vibration okay so then the pipe goes up turns 90 45 and then comes out of the house right there I have used my great stuff gun and um, insulated and, and uh, stuffed it with insula with the great stuff so that it doesn't uh, so there's no air gaps or anything. And these pipes are very lightweight. And uh, notice I've got primer on on my joints. Uh, now there's been some discussion about why you'd put a fan on the inside of the house. Now people say. Oh, you don't want to put the fan on the inside of the house because if blowing air out of the fan causes a pressure, could potentially be blowing radon into the house. So if you've got a good, firm, tight uh, connections on your pipe, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, why would you want to put the fan inside the house? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, fans and motors are affected by heat. If you put that fan outside in the sun, it's going to get really hot. So it's a cool space in here in the, in the basement. As long as I have uh, a good tight fittings, I'm not pumping radon into my basement from underneath the floor. Uh, what else? It's weather tight, so weather will never affect this, this system. Um, so there's your two reasons. So when people say, oh, put the radon fan up in the attic. I say it's a terrible idea because fans are affected by heat. Again, this fan costs $180. I can't imagine it lasting more than a couple of years. If it's running 24-7 in the heat of the summer, the bearings will lose their grease from the heat and the, the motor will fail. You'll be replacing it every three or four years. Okay, so I'm hoping to get better life out of it by installing it here in the basement. All right, so let's go outside and take a look at what I have out there. Okay, so I'm outside. This is where the pipe exits the wall. It's a pretty good setup, vinyl siding or a PVC siding. Now, I have not glued this joint yet. This pipe is just here temporarily, and I wanted to get a sense of how much air is going to be blowing out of here. Oops. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the last uh, time I was videoing, the camera battery, or my phone battery, completely died on me. So, uh, picking up the next weekend, and this is where we stand. So, let me show you where we have. Uh, everything's coming out here. We're coming down about 10 feet, down by where the gas line comes up into the house. And then you can hear pretty good whistling there. Significant volume of air. And so I'm thinking, uh, now turn a 90 right here, go straight up the wall, do a 45 and a 45, and then go 90 and point that direction toward the woods. Um, my theory is, the theory is, is that the uh, sound that you hear is primarily coming from the actual release of the air. So we're, it's almost like a horn. So the, you only hear the sound as it's exiting the, the, the pipe. So I don't hear anything along the actual length of the pipe. So if we send the sound that direction, we may not hear it out here in the backyard at all. So, Okay, so here I've cut a length of the four inch pipe. I've done a little chop action into it and cut it again, skinned it with this quarter by quarter 
hardware cloth, which is galvanized steel, shouldn't rust. Uh, attached it to the pipe with these little stainless steel screws so they are white and they shouldn't rust and I'm not going to paint this at all and then of course I'm going to put a cap on the tip and I formed this cap here same material because it's so thin I was able to form it around this plastic with my hands and just kind of pinch it and this is going to be the cap so the idea is, is that it's going to be oriented like that and it'll be, it will be like this, so that air will come out, you know, at the end of the pipe, and also be able to be released downward. And then this will keep rain from falling into the pipe and give as little <clears throat> resistance to the airflow. A lot of the, uh, the radon people will just put a cap on the end of the pipe. And uh, <clears throat> my thinking is that that's actually producing a fair amount of back pressure. And I don't want any back pressure. I want all the air coming out of the, the, the uh, basement slab to be able to go with least amount of back pressure. And I think that that's what this accomplishes. So. Okay, so here's the finished pipe. I've put four screws. Again, they're stainless steel screws. <clears throat> the screws are actually holding the end cap on. And then I have these three screws holding the sleeve around which covers this area. So, now I'm going to assemble it and put it up on the wall. Okay, folks, behind me is the working radon system all completed. And I think it turned out very nicely. Um, take a look. There it is. Blowing the air to the north, that direction. Sort of. The, it's just pretty quiet. I mean, you can hear it running, but it's pretty quiet. So, coming out of the wall here, runs along here to an area 10 feet away from open windows where I have my gas line. Now this radon system doesn't even get inspected so the county doesn't care what I do about it. And there it is. So I had to build a standoff right there um, out of PVC and those screws that are holding it uh, let's see if I can... Those screws that are holding into the wood of the fascia, or yeah, I guess it's called a fascia board, uh, those screws are four inches long. So I have two inches of stacked PVC pieces there, which is weather proof. They're not going to rot or rain or get damaged by the weather. And then those, that screw is a painted screw galvanized uh, exterior screw that can go through that all the way through the fascia metal. I had to drill quarter inch holes through the uh, metal because that, that those screws could not tap the, um, the fascia uh, material that I have. But it goes into the uh, wood a full two inches. Actually it goes through it because it's a, it's a two by eight up there. And um, so there it is. It looks very good. It's all plumb and uh, I think that that cage will give good ventilation and good, uh, it will not restrict the airflow at all. And it'll keep birds and stuff out of there. So there it is. Strapped, strapped and everything. Hi everybody, okay, this is Mark and I'm going to walk you through the actual very important uh, numbers of what happened with after we actually installed the radon system. So again, when I first tested the radon in the basement with the one radon eye that we had, the radon level was 16. We immediately ventilated the space and we got the level down to 3 and 4. As soon as we closed the windows, the level of radon rose again. So the level of radon was like 12 in the basement and upstairs it was like in the order of eight. So after I installed the radon, we the radon uh, fan system, 
we started keeping uh, records of the radon levels in the basement. And here they are. Let me show you what they actually were. Okay, so initially at 6 p.m. and I finished the system, radon level was 8.6. At 7, it was 7.8, 730, 7.4. You can see what it is. 9 o'clock, it was 4.98, 9.30, 5.7, blah, blah, 5.2. Down. Now, I get up at work at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, 4.30 in the morning, it was 3.47. So the level is consistently dropping in the basement. All the way the next day, it was below the safe levels. So it was safe. Now, let me go to the next day. Now, the next day, we actually started keeping records of both day, of both upstairs, the basement, and upstairs. Upstairs, it was 2, basement 2.59. You can see the numbers are down in the low categories. But then, interestingly, these numbers in the basement are actually lower than these numbers upstairs. And I'm thinking, well, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. And they were consistently higher in the upstairs, 3.3 upstairs, 1.27. They're very low here in the basement. The radon fan system was working beautifully. But for some reason, we couldn't get the numbers as low upstairs. And it occurred to me, you can see this consistently. Now, we stopped keeping such copious notes, but still... The numbers were either the same or roughly the same. Now here we have 3, 2.4, 2.2. It's consistently higher upstairs. And I'm like, here's one. After a rain, it was 4.5. And down in the basement, it was only 1.6. Well, 4.5 is actually higher than you want, apparently. So I'm like, what could be the reason for that? So I had a theory that the actual numbers of radon were elevated in the um, upstairs because we were keeping the radon eye sitting on the granite countertop. Our countertops are granite in the kitchen. And that level of radon, we moved, or I should say, we moved the, the radon eye over to the windowsill, which is far away from the kitchen countertops. And look at the numbers now. So here, Goodness, we got like a reflection there. They go from 4.5 down to 1.9, 1.7, 1 1.45. They are the lowest they've ever been. And the interesting thing is they say that granite is where radon can come from. And I think it's coming right out of our countertops. But it's very low. Still in the, in the house, 1.9 is definitely in the safe category. And down in the basement, 1.5. So there's the date, 7-2. This is a couple days back. Very interesting. So the radon level is actually, radon level is actually higher uh, right there on the kitchen countertop because of my granite countertops. Well, I'm not getting rid of my granite countertops, and we'll just keep the radon system working. And this is a this is a very surprising uh, for me, very surprising outcome. I did not expect this radon pump system to work as well as it is. So, one fan. It's kind of a large fan. They say that the fan is really for a house that's 2,000 square feet, and our house is more than double that. Uh, the basement floor space is anyway. So I'm surprised that it works this well, but maybe it's because we have a nice four inch gravel base from with, you know, from which the uh, air can easily be pumped out. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments, you know, give me a, shoot me an email. I'd love to talk to people about this. I'm sort of an extrovert. I guess I like to talk to people about things. And, um, uh, I'm going to be keeping, I'm going to make videos of other projects that I'm working on around here. So look forward to, to making my next one. And if you find this interesting, please hit the subscribe button and, and follow my next video. So thanks a lot for listening. And this is Mark saying we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.